Welcome to a very different episode today, which is about Portuguese pastries. Because we are still one more week in this gorgeous paradise. Check it out, check it out, check it out. See how beautiful this is. And certainly I was figuring out what am I going to film today. So I figured out I'm going to try a lot of different Portuguese pastries. And I'm going to report back to you how differently they actually taste. So here are the three different kinds of pastries I found, which I found in the supermarket. I have to check out later the spelling, but the pretzel is a amendao. But I'm going to check later with Google to make sure I'm going to pronounce it correctly, which it's kind of crazy to think I'm checking with Google how it would be pronounced. I assume amendao, which I haven't checked yet, is almonds. But maybe it's not. So here's the pastry. It is kind of twisted and has a filling in. It looks like a vanilla filling. Let's taste it. A air custard and a pretzel. Very tasty and it's also not overly sweet. Keep in mind, none of those pastries are gluten-free, but when I travel, I like to taste those things I have never seen before. And then I can go home and figure out, for the cold Irish winters, how I could actually make this gluten-free. It might be good that I don't live somewhere warm. I would be too busy eating and enjoying the sunshine. So this is like a chocolate fruit, which is called... Um, Ferraduba Chocolates. Again, I'm gonna check the Tontai spelling in a bit. It's chocolate. It's like a pain au chocolat almost, just much longer, so you can have more of it. It has also the flakiness of a pain au chocolat. Check it out. The, the dough itself is a little bit harder than a pain au chocolat. Hmm, but, the same, but it's a very similar concept. Different pastry than what I use for a croissant or pain au chocolat, but definitely have some similarities with it. And that reminds me more on a muffin. I think they eat that more for breakfast. Now the interesting thing is that all the pastry is much more yellow. And if you would compare it to any of the American baked goods or the French baked goods. So I'm assuming they're using more egg yolk in their pastry and the chicken might be healthy as well. Who knows? It is actually an interesting question because I'm starting to think about maybe the eggs are much more yellow. And I never really thought about the difference between French bakeries or Portuguese bakeries. You know, I mean, it's baked goods and to be honest, I was a bit ignorant about it. But I definitely taste a very different sort of flavor profile or texture they use in Portuguese bakery versus French bakery and German bakery. It definitely has more to do with egg and sugar, like the concept of a flan or the flan flavor. It's very nice, it's just very different from what I would have expected it to be. <clears throat> There's another thing I found, which is I guess a brioche ovo. But it says croissant comme crème. Hmm. And then here's the pao de deux. Deo. Or pao de deo. So it looks like a croissant. Just not as flaky. I assume ovo is an egg. So it's maybe croissant with more egg. So it's a croissant with an egg cream inside. That is the ovo. It's like a vanilla custard or egg custard within a bread. Sneaky. It's tasty, but not my cup of tea. It could also be the filling itself. I think it is the filling. And keep in mind that's store bought. So I'm thinking if I would get that fresh, made by a local bakery, 
And here is this other pastry. Again, this very yellow color. It's a mix between a coffee cake and bread. So from all the different cakes I tried, or desserts, I think I would try to make this pretzel. That was pretty tasty. I would be tempted to make this chocolate croissant wannabe and this muffin, a brioche cake, as things I would maybe want to try to explore how I could make them gluten-free. I think it's absolutely doable. This one will be the easiest to make. This one will be a little bit more complicated and then the most difficult would be this dough to make. I hope you enjoyed a little bit a different variation of a video talking about glutinous food and how I can potentially tackle it to make it gluten free. At next week's episode we'll be back in Ireland and I'm going to show you how I'm going to make a gluten free bechamel sauce so you can finally make a gluten free delicious lasagna.